So hello boys and girls, hope you're all keeping well. Um, I thought I would show you one of my board games today. I wonder, do you enjoy playing board games? And if so, what's your favourite? Maybe you like Snakes and Ladders or maybe you like Monopoly. Or some of you might like to play uh, on a board like the one I have today. Now this is a chess board. Although you might notice that the pieces of the chess board look different than normal. Now these are all made up of people from a book, a very famous book, which was made into a series of films which you may have seen on TV. So all these pieces are from Lord of the Rings. So here's the book. See how big it is? It's a big, thick book. It takes a very long time to read it, but it's a really good book if you ever get a chance to read it. So Lord of the Rings was written by um, J.R.R. Tolkien just after the uh, First World War. It probably took him a long time to write it because it's a really complicated book. And it's set in a place called Middle Earth. Now, Middle Earth isn't real, but it's a, a country which has been taken over by evil. And the evil has been created by this guy here. And this is called Sauron. So he's a really bad guy. Not good news at all. And uh, he has created a ring which um, basically um, gives someone lots of power. And the person who has the ring can wield evil over the whole world. Um, so Frodo um, is our hero. Here he is. This is Frodo of the Shire. And Frodo's a hobbit. And he's a very small person, as you can see. And he discovers that his uncle has had the ring in his possession for many, many years and didn't realise. And this man here is called Gandalf. And when he discovers that Frodo's uncle Bilbo Baggins has the ring, well, he decides that someone is going to have to destroy the ring and in the fire of Mount Doom before the whole world is taken over by the evil of this man here. So as you can imagine, it's a very, very big task and it's one that Frodo doesn't feel very um, equipped to undertake. So he's a bit worried, um, but he knows it's something that he has to do to try and save everyone else in the world and to keep darkness at bay. So he starts off with some special friends. This is Sam and this is uh, Pippin and this is Mary. So he starts off with his three friends and eventually they find some more friends who have promised to go on this quest and help. So here's, here's some of them here. Let's see where the rest are. But these friends all have different talents. And while Frodo and Sam aren't very good at fighting battles, these people are. They all have talents and together they promised to help Frodo in his quest. So Sam turns out to be a really faithful Sam. Sam turns out to be a really faithful friend of Frodo. And even though he's small and quite humble, he turns out to be a real tower of strength. And he helps Frodo along the way. So here's Gandalf, he's a wizard. And he's a man of wisdom and power. And he gets all these people together to try and defeat this evil. And this is another one of the characters here in the story. This is um, Aragorn. And he is a ranger from the north. But as you can see, he's not actually, he's actually dressed as a king. And he actually is a king. And all the people of the city of Minas Tirith have longed for this man's return for many, many years. And you know, that reminds me a wee bit about the Bible where Jesus is our king and we are looking forward to his return, aren't we? Sometime. So they all go off on this great quest and lots of battles happen and lots of unfortunate things happen. And some of our friends end up getting separated and they're on Sam and, and Frodo end up going their own way, on their own, where everybody else separates as well. And 
whenever you see these two go through the book and you wonder, they're so small, how on earth are they ever going to manage to beat this man here who's got all these really evil creatures? He's got an army of orcs and horrible, horrible things, look. Really evil and really nasty. How on earth are Sam and Frodo going to complete their task and save the world? But you know what? This isn't a real story. But it reminds me of a story in the Bible about someone who was small and someone who was perceived to be inadequate and unqualified to go into battle and to take on someone who was really scary and bigger and a seasoned warrior. Can you guess who I'm talking about? Who do you think I'm talking about? That's right, David and Goliath. So today's story is about David and Goliath and we're going to have a wee look about how even though David was small and unqualified and not a warrior, he still managed to overcome the giant. All right? Today we are taking our story from 1 Samuel chapter 17. The prophet Samuel has anointed David to be king over God's people. In our story today, David knows he has been chosen to be king, but it's not God's time for him to be the king. Saul is still the king of Israel and David spends some of his time with Saul and he spends the rest of his time back in Bethlehem tending his father's sheep. While David was in his father's field tending his sheep, King Saul and his army was preparing for a battle against the Philistines. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 1 to 3. Now the Philistines gathered their enemies for battle, and they were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. The two armies are in position to fight. If you can imagine how this battle scene looks, each army can see each other on the hill that they are camped on. If one of the armies started to move down the hill into the valley, the other army would see and could attack them as they went into the valley. Each army sat still to see which army would make the first move. The army of Israel got some entertainment from the Philistines every day. Let's see if it's the kind of entertainment you would want each day. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze in his head and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armour on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like the weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron and his shield-bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose, choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then will we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Goliath was taunting Israel and challenging one person to fight. The loser of the fight would make their army become slaves to the winner of the fight. No one wants to be a slave to a big angry giant. King Saul and his army belonged to the living God. He was the one who fought their battles. How do you think they should have felt when Goliath shouted, his threats to them. How did Saul and his army feel when Goliath taunted them? Verse 11 tells us, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. God's people forgot who was on their side. They allowed their army to terrify them. 
Instead of trusting God to fight their enemy, they were paralyzed by fear. Meanwhile, they lived in fear every day because Goliath came out every morning and evening for 40 days, shouting and challenging Israel to fight him. When we face difficulties, do we remember, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? Or do we allow our difficulties to paralyze us and keep us from being all that God wants us to be? Back in Bethlehem, Jesse is thinking about his three eldest sons who were in Saul's army. He hadn't seen or heard from them for a while and he wanted to know how they were doing. He called for David who was tending his sheep. David, please take this grain and ten loaves of bread to your brothers who are fighting in Saul's army. I would like you also to take ten blocks of cheese to give to the captains of their army. Will you please find out how your brothers are doing while you're there? From what we already know about David's character, how do you think he responded to his father's request? Well, verse 20 tells us, And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going out to the battle line, shouting the war cry. David found someone to take care of the sheep while his father was away and went to visit his brothers as his father asked. When David arrived at the army of Israel's camp, he showed up just in time for Goliath's daily taunt. Imagine David's surprise as he hears this nine foot tall giant shouting, send me a soldier and I will fight him alone. If you win the battle, then we will be your servants. We will serve you. But if I win the battle, then you will become our servants and you will serve us. I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man today that we may settle this matter now. When Goliath was saying, I defy the armies of Israel, he was daring them to fight him. This Philistine giant worshipped gods that were not real. He was mocking Israel and mocking the one true God by defying them. David must have turned to look at the armies of the living God to see what they were going to do with this big angry giant who would defy God and his army. As he turned to look, they all ran away in fear. Verse 24 tells us, All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. David must have been surprised by the fear of Saul's army. He began to ask them questions. Why will no one fight him? You are God's army. Who is this unclean, ungodly Philistine who would dare defy God's army? David didn't understand why they would not trust God's power to help them. Sadly, Israel asked for a king so that they could be like the other nations around them. They got what they asked for and received Saul. Saul was not a leader who was helping God's people to keep their eyes upon the one true God. He was disobedient to God and had turned away from him and led God's people away from God in the process. As a result, God's people forgot that they had the one true God on their side. It took a young shepherd boy to come to the battlefield to see that God's people were being terrified by a man who would dare God to fight him. When we become paralysed by fear or any other emotion like worry that God tells us not to have, we forget the power we have to win the battle we face. If you are a believer, remember who is fighting for you. Some men told Saul about David and he wanted to meet with him. David knew that God had power over all his enemies and he stood before King Saul very bravely. He said, do not let men's hearts fear because of this giant. I am your servant and I will go and fight with this Philistine. As Saul looked at David, he saw a young man. To fight in an army, a man had to be 20 years old. David wasn't even old enough to fight in Saul's army. Saul said, you're not able to go against this Philistine and fight him. You're just a young man. And this man has been fighting in the Philistine army since he was a young man. I can do it, King Saul, because God will help me. I am responsible for taking care of my father's sheep. One time I had to kill a lion and another time I had to kill a bear to protect the sheep. If God can help me to kill a lion and a bear with my bare hands, he will help me to win against this Philistine giant who has defied the armies of the living God. As David was faithful in caring for his father's sheep, God was preparing him for this day in history. Because God had given him the power to protect the sheep he was responsible for, now David could trust God to face Goliath. Right now you are children, but God can use your faith in him to point others to Jesus. Always be faithful with the tasks you are assigned. 
because one day you will be able to see how God prepared you for the work he has for you as you grow older. King Saul must have been impressed with David's courage and faith in God's power. He told David it would be okay for him to fight Goliath and gave him his armour to wear. David wasn't able to move around in Saul's armour, so he took them off and headed out to battle in his own clothes. Verse 40 tells us, Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. With his shepherd's staff in one hand, David leans down and he chose five smooth stones from a stream and placed them in his bag. Goliath mocks this young shepherd boy who's coming out to fight him. David is trusting God's power and isn't afraid. Let's read his response in verses 45 and 47. Then David said to the Philistine, You came to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the enemies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. I will, and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the field, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into your hand. If David was going to fight Goliath in his own strength and power, he would fail. David wasn't trusting in his own strength, but in the name of the Lord Almighty. It is only through God's power that enemies can be defeated. David wanted Goliath and everyone who was watching to know that he was fighting in God's power so that they would know that God is the only true God. It is important if we are believers to share our faith in Jesus with others. So when they see the difference in our lives, they know it's because of Jesus' power living in us that we are different and not because we are able to be different in our own power. So Goliath came forward to meet David and as he did, David reached into his shepherd's bag and took one smooth stone and placed it in his sling. He wound up the sling and as the sling sailed through the air, God guided that stone with speed and accuracy and it hit Goliath smack in the middle of his forehead. The giant who dared to defy God and his army fell flat on his face and was a defeated foe. David was willing to trust God and his power and God used him to fight against this ungodly enemy. From time to time we all face some kind of enemy that either causes us to be afraid, sad or angry. Just as God gave David power to fight his enemy, the Holy Spirit living in your heart will give you power to fight whatever battles that come into your life. If you have never been saved, the biggest enemy you face is sin and the consequences of sin. Because we have all sinned, we are separated from God. Unless we have our sin forgiven, we will be separated from God forever. Jesus fought the battle against sin when he was nailed to the cross for our sins and my sins. He died in our place to take our punishment for our sins. God's power raised Jesus to life three days later and he is now living in heaven seated at his right hand. The battle against sin was won when Jesus died on the cross, was buried and rose again the third day. Today you can have your sins forgiven if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Please speak to, to one of the Sunday school teachers if you have any questions about God or how you go about Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for every person who has watched this video or listened to this message. We just pray that you would keep them and their families safe at this time. Thank you for the lessons we can learn from your word. Thank you, Lord, that while we are not strong within ourselves, when times of trouble, we can turn to you and we know that you can give us the strength to face whatever giants there are in our life. Please, Lord, remember those who aren't well at the minute. and Remember those who are struggling with COVID-19 or lockdown or isolation. Just pray that you be with each and every one of them and that they would feel your arms surrounding them at this time. All these things we ask in your name. Amen.